when we want to add something to the tree, we start at the root and we say, if I'm going to add 20, is 20 bigger than 10 or smaller than 10? It's bigger, so I'm going to go to the right. Is 15, sorry, is 20 bigger than 15 or smaller? It's bigger, so I'm going to go to the right. Is 20 bigger than 18 or smaller? It's bigger, I'm going to go to the right. Of course, 18's um, right-hand side pointer at the moment is pointing to null. So when we find a place that's null, we want to say, let's create a node and put our 20 there. Yeah? If I wanted to add an 8 to the tree, I would start at the 10, I would go left, I would go to the 6, I would go right, I would go to the 7, I would go right, and I would add my 8. Okay? So we always add to the tree at the bottom at an, at an empty node at one of the leaves. And so our add method, our add method can be a recursive method because we don't know how many layers down we have to go. Our tree could have hundreds of levels in it. And so if we have a recursive add method, we can start at the root and we can just keep passing either the left child or the right child, go to that node, pass the left child or the right child, go to that node, pass the left child or the right child until we get to a null. So our add method is going to take an E object, that's the thing that we're going to add to the tree, and the other parameter is going to be a node of node E okay. type. And we're going to ask, is our object bigger or smaller than the node that we're looking at? And of course, we do that using our friend comparable. So if comparable E, so there's our cast object dot compare to node dot data. And this is one of those points where you need to pause, have a little break, have a little hammer time and say, which way round does it have to be? So if object is bigger than data, we're going to return a value that's greater than zero. Write a little comment here. If object is bigger than data, we're going to return a value that's greater than zero. We're going to go to the right. Okay, object is bigger than data. Our node.data is our 10. Our object that we're trying to add is our 20. If 20 is bigger than 10, we're going to go to the right. Okay. It's one of those cases that you have to pause. You have to make sure you've got the things the right way around because you could compare node.data to object and you could change th this greater than to a less than. So we're going to go to the right, so we want to check what happens if we're at a place where we've got a null. Okay. So if node.write is equal to null, then we're going to make a new node and we're going to store it in node.write. So node.write is equal to new node e object. And once we've done that, we're done. Okay? We don't have to do anything else. We're out of there. So if node.write is null, we make a new node with our object, we store it, and we create the link from the pointer node.write that points then to our new node that we've created. If node.write is not null, we're somewhere here where we've got values, and we're going to go down and we're going to ask ourselves to add us to the right child. So then we're just going to return add the object that we're trying to add, 
and we're going to call that add method with our right child. Okay. So we're using a recursive method. Almost all tree methods are recursive because you never know whether you're going to go right or left and you never know how big the tree is. And so you can just keep recursing until you get to where you need to be. So if comparable E object is not bigger than zero, that means we're going to go to the left. And we basically have the same code. So if node.left is equal to null, then node.left is equal to new node e object and return. Otherwise, we just return add object node.left. So this is a really nice recursive add method, right? It's going to go down, it's going to find the right place. Notice that we're calling recursion. So we call add object node dot right. And so that comes in again, and we start back up at the top. So if we're adding an 8, the first thing we do is we compare the 8 to the 10, and we go to the left, because 8 is less than 10. And then, because we're calling our recursion, we go back to the top, and we compare the 8 to the 6. Because eight's bigger than six, we go to the right. And then we call ourselves again. We go back to the top. We compare eight to the seven. Because eight is bigger than seven, we're trying to go to the right. But because the seven dot right would be null, that's where we're going to add the seven. We add it, and we're out of there. So what would happen with this method if we had duplicate entries in our tree? Where would they end up? Would they end up on the left? Would they end up on the right? Or would they end up at the top? So let's think. Let's say our tree is how we had it before. And let's say we're going to add a 7. Let's say we're going to add a 7. So we start, we say, is 7 bigger than 10? It's not. So we go to node.left. Node.left is not null. So we, we're here now at 6. And we say, is 7 bigger than 6? It is. So we go to node.right. Node.right is not null. So we go down. And we're now at the node 7. And we say, is 7 bigger than 7? It's not. 7 is not bigger than 7. And so we would go to node.left. So our duplicate entries would be added on the left. Similarly, if we wanted to add a 10, when we first do the comparison, 10 compared to 10, 10 is not bigger than 10. So we would add it to the left. But 10 is bigger than the 6, and it's bigger than the 7. And so the 10, a duplicate 10, would be added here. Okay. We can change that. We can change that behavior. And we can simply change it by just saying, instead of greater than, we could say greater than or equal to. So by adding an equal sign, now when we compare 10 to 10, 10 is greater than or equal to 10, because it's equal. And so we would go to the right. And so we would add the t we would start off here with the 10. We would go to the 15. 10 is less than 15. It's less than 12. So we would put the 10 down here. Okay. It also doesn't matter if you compare object to node.data or node.data to object. You can flip the order here. And it doesn't matter whether you say greater than or less than here. What matters is that you're consistent. So that in each of your methods, and we're going to see several different methods where we're going to use this kind of syntax, in each of your methods, you do it the same way. And so when I write this code, I always compare the object to the data, and I say, if it's greater than, we go to the right. 
And that way, every method, I'm always consistent. Okay? You cannot, in some methods, do it one way, and in other methods, do it the other way. Otherwise, your tree won't work. You have to always be consistent, as you'll see. And then, finally, with our add, what we don't want to do is we don't want to provide this as a public method so that some strange person that's using our tree that we've never met before starts messing around with our nodes. So what we probably want to do, what we really want to do, is to provide a public method that has an add with an object and then make this a private method where we add to our tree. And so we have one special node on our tree. In our linked list, we had a special node that was called head. In our tree, we have a special node that's called root. And just like head in the linked list, analogous to that, in our tree, root is a globally scoped variable, and it's a type node E. And whenever we want to get into the tree, we're going to access it via the root node. It's the only way into the tree. And so what we're going to do is we're going to provide a public void add e object. And in our add method, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to test and say, do we have an empty tree? If we've got nothing in there, let's create a new tree and we're done. So if root is equal to null, we have an empty tree, right? So if root is equal to null, let's just make root is equal to new node E object. If root's not null, what we want to do is we want to figure out whereabouts in our tree we're going to add our object. And so we're going to call our recursive method. Else add object root. That's our, that's our initial node E, the first one that we have to test. Is 20 bigger than 10? And this is where we probably want to add our current size. We increment our current size, and we're done. Okay. So this notion of having two very similar signatures is called overloading. And we're overloading the add method. We're providing an add method that you can just call with a single argument, the object, and an add method that has two parameters, that takes two arguments, one object and one which is a node E. Okay? And so that's called overloading because you've got slightly different signatures, slightly different ways of handling it.